just quickly, who here uses Facebook? Okay, great. Who here has a page, a business page on Facebook? Okay. Who here actually posts on their business page on Facebook? Wow. Okay, great. That's <laughs> better than the last time I spoke. There were about the same number of people in here, and it was one person who had their hand up at the end of that. <laughs> so, um, so I had been doing just really quickly. I started in F Facebook um, four years ago with a company called Israel 365. Shimshon, actually, the reason why I wanted you to just you to put up that landing page is because that's why I learned landing pages. I learned landing pages from Shimshon. <laughs> I worked, I worked, I did, I, his, his landing, I learned landing pages from him. Um, so I worked with a company, Israel 365. When we started, I, I was there 45 days into the company. They had 1,000 emails, 300 people on Facebook, and an iPod app that doesn't even exist anymore. At this point, they have 150,000 people on their email list. We were sending 2.5 million emails a month. Um, Shimshon was, was sent a lot more than 10 million a year. You, I mean, we were advertising with us. It was way more than 10 million a year. Um, and we five and a half, 500,000 people on Facebook. When I was there, we spent like half a million dollars on Facebook ads. We were sen selling $30,000 a month of Judaica plus any partner stuff that we were selling. Like, they were doing a lot of stuff. I left there Jan July 1st to start this guy, Raspack Media. Has any, I'm just curious, has anyone seen this logo anywhere? <laughs> just, I, yes, two. Um, so I, I, I post videos five days a week, and every video that I post, which if you'll notice, oh, I'll use my the little ball thing, where's the red, the dot? Oh gosh, it clicked. <laughs> um, okay, basically you'll notice that right now, click, click, okay, this guy, um, there's a post at 4 p.m., that's a video. I only have 185 likes. I've never paid for any likes on my page. Every video gets seen by 300 people. So videos are de definitely working on Facebook. Hmm? Um, Facebook online marketing. So this week, wow. this week, I've, I, I, at this point, I, I kind of just want to switch to questions, but I've probably answered every one of your questions in the last three months because I've made 50 vid 55 videos. You just finished recording. 55 videos. I, I think you want to repeat that. I think it went over everybody's head. You have 185 likes and more people are yes. watching the videos. Than Every you. single day, more people watch my video than I have likes on my Facebook page without paying any money. Are they showing up also on YouTube? Is I put them on YouTube. Their home. their home is, I want them here. Oh, okay. I want them here. I, ha I put them on, fi on, vi on YouTube. I think I've gotten like 1,300 views, but I really couldn't care less about YouTube. Well, I don't how do they know about you? Because um, they. I never heard. I'm only, around, I'm only around for eight months, okay. yeah, so I only started videos January 2nd, and I'm up to 55, video, five every single week. So how do they hear about me? Um, usually I get a like, and, or uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working now for hearts, that's why I'm really into hearts. hearts. Facebook now has Facebook reactions, if you haven't, how do I scroll? Love, love, love. well, it's a big giant heart thing, but uh, basically it looks like this, this guy. Why is it not going down? I was saying, how do you make money for this? How do I make money for this? I do clients online advertising. Okay. That's, so, I, so, oh gosh, okay. Basically, this guy, I don't know why it's not loading. It's supposed to load Facebook reactions. Oh, the guy over there? These guys, these guys, this thing. So Facebook doesn't actually know what any of these mean yet because they just put them up. So if you get an angry face, it is worth as much as a like. For now, it will change, but basically, um, every time someone likes, comments, shares, anything, um, it, every one of their friends see this video because Facebook really, really likes videos. So if you like a video, then the hope is that they could then send it to everyone that that person is friends with, and then they'll also like the video. Even if they don't watch the video, if they watch it for like 10 seconds, that's already bonus points for me. Basically, anything that the person, if they just hover over the video without watching it, they're they're watching, Facebook thinks they're watching it. Facebook counts a view, three seconds on mute is a view on Facebook. So anything that I, oh, and someone's messaging me. <laughs> How do you move to Facebook what Live? All right, okay, Facebook Live is live for anyone with an iPhone. I am not one of those who are Zoha to Facebook Live yet, but if you have an iPhone, you can literally just go into your status and on the bottom it says live now, you hit it, you are live. So Facebook actually announced this week that if you go live, if you are live right now, and someone who follows you is on Facebook, you will appear number one on their newsfeed. 
Every, they show up, they, you will be number one on your newsfeed. I am actually considering just walking around live my entire day because I will be number one if anyone that follows me, and then if they like it, then I'll be number one on any one of their friends' news feeds, and it's like ridiculous hack, like absolutely ridiculous hack. Um, ridiculous what? Hack for Facebook, meaning you, you're number one on someone's news feed if you just That's click a live. So hmm? what if you have nothing to say? The page. The pa so pages can now also go live. It, except on Android, because they hate us. I don't know. Everyone hates Android. But so you can go live on an iPhone, on a page, on a personal anything, and you will be number one. Hmm? Isn't it an intrusion? Why? You're, number, you're, you're not paying any money, and the person liked your page, so they want to see your content. So if they don't click, then Facebook will lower it. But right now, Facebook announced that this week that they put you number one. So for the next month before they change the algorithm, you're going to be number one on everyone's Facebook page. So just really quickly, um, I, I want to be like really specific about this the next 40 something <laughs> minutes. So I just really quickly, like, what do some of you do so that I could talk about that? You. I'm just starting out as a medical clown. Medical clown. Writer. Uh, writer, project. Uh, writer. Uh, health consultations. OK. Animated explainer videos. Those are fantastic. Yes. Stress management relationship coaching. Okay. So what I'm hearing is um, you write content for a living. You write content for a living. You create content for a living. Like, yeah. So Facebook is definitely something that every that you all should be on because you're creating content for a living. Facebook wants you to create content, and they want to put your content in front of people that want to see the content. So it's just a matter of creating content that your people want to see, like the people that follow you or people that don't yet follow you want to see, and then put that content out on Facebook. So as I said, oh, I'm still playing. It's like really great. You get to see me twice. <laughs> so, um, Are you saying the same you thing? Just because it's like a signature thing? Oh, um, I went to Old Navy once like six months ago and bought five shirts, and they just pre <laughs> rotate the same five shirts. Yeah, thank you. This was totally planned out, this exact. Uh, I actually have that shirt somewhere. No. Um, oh, I, I just got a haircut yesterday. My wife, actually, I used to like get like haircuts less often, but my wife makes me go get haircuts because I record every Tuesday morning. So I have to get, like, I, <laughs> I have to go shave. So you do all five videos on Tuesday? I do all five videos on Tuesday. Yes, Avram. All five videos on Tuesday, uh, then Avram graciously edits them. Do you and change your shirt? Yes, I change my shirt every, <laughs> five, every video. Yes, yes, I do change. Do you put them up on different days? I put them every day at 4 p.m. This, the one, the, this, I'm not going to try scrolling. It's ridiculous on here. Are you trying to hit hmm? it? I posted 4 p.m. Israel time because um, I was going to post at 5, but then I went on my thing, and I saw that everyone comes on at like 4.30. So I want to come I want to get traffic right before everyone's coming on, get some amount of like or share, which like for 150 people is like one, which is really all I care about, which is one. And then at five o'clock when everyone's coming on, Facebook said, well, you got a like, so you, other people probably want to see you. Let me show you to 30 other people. And then as the day goes on. So I like posting like right before the heavy traffic, which allows your best like most engaged people, which is my mother, <laughs> uh, to, to, to engage. And then Facebook says, oh, wow, this person engaged. And then get you more uh, reach as the day goes on. So I actually, um, I also write a blog post every day. And those are posted either earlier, like at 12 or at 7, because again, those are the two, just the people going to sleep, just the people waking up. I have so much to say, yes. <laughs> well, I'm actually, every, every week this happens. A Tuesday morning, I'm walking. I walk into Avram's house, and I go, which is where we record, and I say, I have nothing to say. Let's go. Five videos, and it just happens. Yes, it just happens, yes. So can you clarify why it's not important to have a lot of likes on your page? You're just, like, taking the Videos coming out tomorrow. <laughs> yes. So basically, for most people's companies, you are going to have to spend some amount of money on Facebook to advertise. And since your posts, normal posts, get seen by like 3% of your likes, so if you're paying for likes, then you're not paying for your content distribution. So meaning I would rather spend my money, which I haven't even done yet, but I would rather spend my money to get my content out, which we're going to discuss, um, and then 
reach people, those people who like it will then like the page because there's a giant like button. Um, usually on the post right there, there's a huge button that says like this page. And does that have something to do with like previously you can't make sales on Facebook, so you want to take them away and take them to your web page or whatever, but so, now you can start making sales. Like so Facebook. you can make sales on Facebook and <laughs> this video is actually come. I think this is today. This is tomorrow's video. Tomorrow's video talks about this exact. <laughs> just like watch it. Here's the playlist. We'll just turn it on. I'll sit down. Um, so, so basically, if you target the right people, you can sell on Facebook. The question is, who's the right people? So usually, the right people are people you've already sold to, or people on your email list, or people that have vis visited your website. Um, my hope is that any everyone who raised, raised their hand has a website that also has a Facebook pixel on it. Please. please. Yes, Facebook pixel. Okay, good. Last, the last speech I just spoke about the Facebook pixel for the next 30 minutes after that question. Um, so basically that Facebook pixel is like some magical thing that any time someone comes to your website, your page is better. Meaning your page, because your, your pixel runs, so now your page does better because they said you're getting traffic to your website, the person likes you on Facebook, well they came to your website so they must like your content, we'll show more of your content. Right? So, so just by having your pixel, by running zero ads on your website, just by getting people to come to your, your page or your website or your content, you, everything is doing better. Facebook wants to show your content, which by the way, the bottom line on Facebook is they want to show to users what users want to see. So if you're posting content they don't care about, you just won't get shown. That's, that's it. So what you want to do is put up content that your users want to see. So I actually want to talk about, um, uh, yes. How do you tie the Facebook pixel with a particular page? Basically, if someone comes to my website who has a Facebook account, which is one in every seven people in the world has a Facebook account, and if they come to my website, then if they like my page or if I advertise to them, I will pay less for an ad, they add because they already like my website. I don't, to, I, I don't know. I have the pixel and I have the page, but I, I don't think I've tied them together. No, no, no. If I mean, if you created a, if you created a pixel, they, it's connected to your account. To my account and to your account, your yes knows the page. So if they like your page, it's you will get more impressions on your individual posts because your you people come to your web. That person came to your website, and then it gets a little creepier because Facebook then knows what every other thing the person visited. So for Hebrew, if they visited another similar website, they now you get brownie points because. Your Hebrew thing is like their Hebrew thing, so they probably also like your thing, and then your stuff will get shown. So that's really, by everyone having Facebook pixels, now Facebook knows everyone's stuff that they like doing, and then they're able to show more things that they like, even if it's not connected to the, the original post they saw. Personalization. Personalization. But then it gets even, then you're like, oh, it's creepy enough. It actually gets creepier than that, because then when you advertise to those people who like learn Hebrew, or like, whatever it is you write content about, <laughs> um, then your ads will be shown cheaper to them because they want to see your posts. So this is really where um, I, I'm actually running a page for a company that they print signs in New Jersey. Like they print on Hotella vans and they print for schools and for banks and any graph, like billboards, everything. So they don't create their own content. So what do we post on their Facebook page? So as opposed to trying to convince them to make some sort of budget to create blogs on a normal basis and then post them. I use a thing called Buffer. Who here knows what Buffer is? Okay, Buffer, um, you just sync it to your LinkedIn or your Twitter or your Pinterest or I think they're working on Instagram. They're not yet released because you can't actually, it's a little hard to post straight to Instagram. But basically, you can schedule all your posts all within Buffer without going anywhere. Now, there's an even funner part because there's a company called Q, spelled Q with three U's that will then curate content for the space you want. So we are trying to reach graphic designers. I go to Q and I say, Q, give me stuff about graphic design. Every day for free, Q will give me two posts that they have picked out from the stuff that they, that they liked. And now I could post on my Facebook page twice a day without creating a single piece of content or paying any money, right? So now if, if you like pay like $10 a month, you get five posts a day. So now I can post five posts a day for $5 a month without pay, without, and schedule them all in advance without doing anything, getting people to see my content. And then when I want to pay for an ad, um, it will be considerably cheaper because I've been posting good content, they've been liking or sharing or seeing it. And now, or even without any of that, Facebook sees I'm an active participant on Facebook. So let me, they'll give me 
a chance to you know, pay several cents less than someone else just for being an active person on Facebook. Yes? Can you recommend a, a portal? It sounds like maybe Buffer. Oh, I will. Oh, I, so for Twitter and Pinterest and all that stuff, I would use a portal. I would I just use, click the link and then paste it straight into Facebook because Facebook knows you're using Buffer. Well, if you, if you wanna, what I'm asking is if, if you could recommend something that's inexpensive that you could post across 50 Facebook groups at the same time. I hate posting on Facebook groups. <laughs> um, why? Because it's, it's like by definition spam to the point where they already know that it's spam. So if you post like, I know someone asked me like, why did it happen that I got blocked out of posting on groups after I posted the same thing 200 times to other groups? Why do they stop me? Well, that's the exact reason. Because you posted to 200 groups, no one wanted to see it then, and no one wants to see it now. So what I try to do is, hmm? Right, so even related groups, you, you want, basically, I, 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 there's like the shtick that you like tag people in your posts. I'm like, really? I don't tag any one of my posts. I just put up good content all the time. <laughs> every, like, I, I just like try, every day when I wake up, I said, is this piece of, is this video worth watching for five minutes? That's basically, is this piece of content that I wrote worth reading for two minutes? And if it's not, then I just hope that no one sees it so that the next time they see it, they'll actually want to watch that video. Do people ever, I mean, you said that you get hate and you get the, an angry oh, no, I don't get an angry, but I would rather an angry than nothing. Oh, you don't get angry. I, I don't get angries, no. Okay. Only hearts, hearts, smiley faces, and, and like buttons. But is it inevitable that you will get an angry? Um, well, so I would rather, so my, fa my famous, competitor. from my competitor, um, if my competitor goes so far out to hate, like, yeah. thing, you know what? That's, I want all of my competitors to come to my page and give me a hate. That's what I want, because yeah, if they actually think that I'm worthwhile to come and hate, message my Facebook page, not only will all of their, their followers see it because they probably have friends that they work with, so they're going to see my video, which is great for me because Facebook doesn't know what an angry means, and also the fact that they went and spent time to click on my video, they'll probably see it again tomorrow. Did you make up those symbols, or who made up those Oh, no, this is face, Facebook. Facebook just added this thing. They said that Facebook doesn't know what it means. Oh, no, they, they just added it like two weeks ago, so they announced that they don't know how to weigh each one. They don't know if angry means bad, they don't know if sadness means upset, they don't know what it means. So they just said, if you get anything, it's equal to a like, and then when we figure it out in like six months, we'll tell you, we'll tell you what it means. We just don't know what it means until now. Um, so I'll tell you that I want to move to Facebook ads now, because that's, the, where am I sitting in time? Oh, I have plenty of time, look at that. Are you doing ads um, that have the funnels the way you described Oh, them? yes. Because God <laughs> forbid if, ever, if Facebook ever decided they didn't like you that day, <laughs> you know? And they I, so that's, this is why, this is actually the reason why I like following Facebook protocol, because the day that Facebook decides they're gonna delete 100 accounts, I won't be deleted because I followed all the rules. That's really, yeah, but I do, I'm a very big proponent of email marketing. I got into a fight with someone yesterday on a group, Facebook group where they told me that they would rush either pay for a like over an email, and, and they said their claim was that it was worthwhile for them. If, you, if anyone could tell me how that's more, it's more worthwhile to pay for a like over an email address, I'd love to have that conversation. This person didn't actually want to have the conversation. They want to yell at me. Um, so, how do you yell on the internet? Caps lock? Yeah. Caps lock? <laughs> <laughs> and then angry faces. Or, no, 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 where they said your full name. My full name, yes. Yeah, it's like yeah. Your mother was angry. Yeah. Well, my, my official Israeli name is Azrael Tzvi Avery Tyler Ratz. So if they want to spend their time <laughs> writing all that out, then, you know. Did you do that on purpose? Um, checks, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so, I, so I'll tell you that I started this company I, I, after having done email marketing, SEO, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all that stuff. And at this point, I'm, I don't do most of that stuff. I just, except for myself, I just do advertising on Facebook, advertising on Google, and email marketing. That's basically all it is. I want you to talk about Facebook ads. So if, who here has run a Facebook ad? The numbers are getting smaller. <laughs> um, so, so with Facebook ads, as we discussed before, your content is really important because the content you, you put up for free decides how cheap your content you pay for it will be, right? So here's really my funnel to get people on an email list, which is really, I'm just pushing them to have be, from step A, they've never heard of me before, to they, they read my, they came to my website, saw my content, then I give them, this is like literally what we spoke about this morning, yeah? Okay. <laughs> um, then I move them from my website to a fantastic offer, whether that's a 15% off, a buy one, get one free, a free ebook, a webinar, 
something, I will stay away from free, totally free physical object, which I know a lot of people, they want to give away something for free. Like a, someone, I'm talking with someone now, they sell um, bottles of sauce, and they want to give a free bottle of sauce away. The catch is you have to pay $9 for shipping, right? So I, the free, where I have to put my credit card number, still doesn't really work for me. And also, free usually brings in people who are not going to spend later. So I would rather have them pay, pay $1.50 it costs $1.50, it's not free, it costs $1.50, and then when I ask you for the normal price of $15, you've already given me money, and then you'll continue to give me money. Or I could give it really for free, and then it costs me money, and you probably won't come back because all you wanted was something free, right? So I want paying customers, that's what I care about. We, I don't know anyone who, say, who would say in business, like, I, I want to give all my stuff away for free, and then I want to go sit on a beach with no money. I want, usually it's like with a cocktail on the, okay. Um, so, so basically, um, the funnel is create some piece of content, anything. It could be a video, it could be an article, it could be an infographic, it, any, legitimately anything. It could be like a, a, I don't know, like a cow jumping up and down, screaming moo. There's, anyone here read Seth Godin? Mm -hmm. Seth Godin. So Seth Godin used to mention that the best website he saw in like 1991 had a, a cow that when you pushed it, it said moo. That was like the most advanced thing they had in 1991. So that's why I talk about like you could have, and that would drew like thousands and thousands of people to come to this website before anyone actually used the internet in 1991. I, I was, no, I got, no one, most people didn't have the, a computer in 1991, so I don't know how they were on the internet. But that's, th this was like the number one website in the world was this thing because you push it and it, it moved. So if you want to create something like that and drive people to your website with your Facebook pixel, and now you've learned about them and people similar to them with a lookalike campaign, do I have to explain? Look like, look like campaign? Okay. Look like campaign. So Facebook has this, this thing. I could just show it to you rather than uh, attempt to um, explain it. Basically, um, all of you could read my newsfeed now. Um, so in advertising. Look at that. It's even my post from yesterday where I got the hate person. <laughs> Um, so this is, this is Ad Manager. So in Ad Manager, why do they have the screen? Someone has to tell Facebook, like, this is like the most ridiculous thing. Like, I'm, it, it just loads. There's nothing ever happening here. I've never wanted to be on this page in my entire life. I've never wanted to be on this. So, so basically what happens is you could tell Facebook, here's my entire email list. Here's my entire phone list. I think they actually still take Facebook IDs. It's still an option. Um, I don't advise. I, I know someone who, who might have spoken earlier. Um, here, who told me that that's how he used to advertise to people. You have a list of 20 Facebook IDs, and you could actually advertise to those exact 20 people on Facebook. Um, again, I, I really don't know why, why that page is necessary. So basically here, in tools, uh, tools, audiences, so here, one day, will be my Facebook pixel, which will show up at some point. And then what it allows you to do is make lookalike campaigns. if Oh, fine, okay. Here, create lookalike camp audience, and then you just pick the audience you want. So here are all the pages that I'm, for some reason, an admin of. And then here it shows me visitors to my website and people on my email list. So you click this button, and then you pick a country. So let's just say United States. I don't think that my, my uh, you need 2,000 people on your email. 1,000 people in this list to create something. I don't have 1,000 people on email list because I, and then you can get two million people like those people. What that means, I have no idea. I don't really care. Facebook knows. So Facebook can now, with this what, three clicks later, I can now um, advertise to two million people just like my people. right? So then what I do is I take this group and I narrow it down more. I pick a city. Like let's say I'm, I'm targeting for um, a supermarket in a specific region. No one's traveling more than 10 miles. So I'm taking this list of two million people specifically the United States. I think it's less in Israel. I think it's like 500,000. And then I'm going to target it by the 10 miles around the supermarket. And then I'm going to target it to the people who most likely buy, which are usually mothers between the ages of 35 and 55. And then I could pick an audience specific. And then I, and then I could go as far as to say, I am trying to sell sauce, right? And then I could say people who like ravioli and, and big ziti and that type of stuff. And now I've taken my list of 2 million. I now have like 30,000 people 
and the chance of me spending money and getting nothing out of it is much less likely than hitting two million people that I really don't know that much about, but Facebook claims that they're kind of similar a little bit to my, my group of people. And this, this, what, this is what I call people who've never heard of you, but that you want to get them in the door because they, they might, they want, you want them to hear about you. So you got them on your website with something, then you give them some sort of deal, and now you have them on your email list. Now you could do whatever automation and sales and all that stuff on email. But in addition, there's no reason not to attempt to sell them directly on Facebook because they know who you are, they've seen your logo, they've been to your website, they've read your content. So now to try to sell them anything straight on Facebook is not crazy. And you're spending incredibly less, like a dramatic decrease in price because Facebook knows that you, they like your page or like whether or not they actually push the like button, they like your content. They have been to your website before, they've given you their email, and Facebook somehow knowing all that stuff, they, they will now say, I'm only gonna pay two cents to be seen by those people, right? So now if I could get seen by the 20,000 people that I put through that funnel, and they're the, my highest level people, they've gone through all the steps, the likelihood of selling is incredibly, like much higher, and the cost is much lower. So this is like the best way to advertise. Yes? You can do that with your competitor's list also, right? Like you can advertise. Yes, but as much as I hate my likes, I hate their likes. Basically, as much as I, I, would, I, w I wouldn't spend money on buying likes, right? So if my competitor bought likes, my, my impression is they got bad likes. Usually that's how it works. They don't, I assume my, most of my competitors don't know what they're doing, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. So if they have 100,000 likes, the likelihood is that 90,000 of them are totally useless to me and I would rather not target those people because they, they, didn't, they don't like my competitor and they won't like me or they really like my competitor and they definitely won't come to me, right? So, so even if you drill down with all the, uh, the, the, the demographic stuff? You, you definitely could test, it definitely, uh, I would say everything is worth testing all the time. I wouldn't spend more than $1,000 if I didn't see, like, you know, I wouldn't spend like a ton of money, but obviously it's worth spending money to see if they actually created a good list and they, they're constantly keeping it up. Because an example I gave in last week's video <laughs> was um, I liked the Matrix movie seven years ago on Facebook. I've had an account since 2014 or 15. I've liked a lot of stuff that I really couldn't care less about now, so if someone were to advertise people who like the Matrix movie, I would be on that list and I would see that ad, even though I really don't care about the Matrix movie, right? So since there's no timeline, which is actually something, um, I, I, let's see if it, if it got added. I doubt it did, but Facebook actually added a fourth option here. I don't have it yet, but they are rolling out a fourth option called engagement, like post engagement, meaning, um, for now it's just videos, but what it would mean is you could actually target people that eventually, however long this takes, a week, two weeks, um, people who've liked your content, people who've watched your videos, people who've shared, like you could literally choose an engagement thing and say, I wanna target the people who've been engaged with my posts. So one, right now there's a target, 95%, um, someone who's viewed 95% of a video of yours, I could target just those people, which are way better than targeting someone who liked my page two years ago, right? So, yes. So I just have a question, what happens if, if for me, my market is much wider. I couldn't go sort of 10 kilometers of a supermarket. Okay, day. So, so what is your market? Um, I mean, it's, it's a holiday rental, it's a chalet in the Alps. Okay, so um, who are the people that are most likely doing the purchase? Well, it's all new to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, but it's families or it's, you know. Well, who's the one that's swiping the, the credit card? I don't know, the first one's not till the end of May. That's my first oh, Okay. Question. Oh, for, oh, no, I'm saying, but who's, who's already booked? Who are the people that have... Well, the people that have booked already are, uh, and that's a bit difficult because they've come through booking.com, so you okay. can never see that it's eight people, ten people. Mm -hmm. but you don't get a name? You don't get a name? Yeah, you get a name. Okay. And we've got one from like, Hungary, we've got England, we've got mm -hmm. America, we've got some mm -hmm. of you, you know. So it's quite a bit, we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, and so the, the real question I'm asking is, like, are they women or men? Um, well, the, the person actually... All I care about is the person with the credit card. At the end of the day, right? The 13-year-old kid isn't, isn't swiping the card. No, it's, it's the parents. The parents. Okay, so now you have parents, which means you could actually target on Facebook parents of kids between the age of 0, 2, 4, right? 2 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 18. You could actually target people who are out of a country, right? So I could, I could so for example, if I wanted to target expat, it's, I could target Americans in Israel, mm -hmm. right? So, or you would, ta you would target people that like the Swiss Alps. 
or people that like to travel. So you're, the, at the end of the day, you're narrowing your audience. Like it can't be, not everyone is interested in going, I, like, right. So you, there are, there is a group you could definitely drop down your group to. Sport, because we have extreme sports and things like that. Right, so now you've, and that definitely cuts the, the audience down even more. And so what I like, so this is one of the complaints that someone said to me was, but wait, my audience is 200,000 people and you're telling me to target to 40,000 people. So I said, the day I get 40,000 people to sign up for my thing, I'll be happy. And when you're still trying to advertise your 200,000, and uh, you know, hopefully that you'll, hopefully, I want to see you get 20,000 from your 200,000 and I'll stick to my targeting, my smaller group. And then when I've sold to them, I can move on to the other, there's plenty of time, I'm not in a rush anywhere. So you're trying to get clients to use your marketing services. Yes. But you're giving away tips. Yes. You know why? Because the people that will take, this is a video last week, <laughs> the people that will, that will take it and, yeah, two, two weeks ago, sorry, uh, the people that will, that will take the tips and use them will never pay me. Okay. And the people that, will, that are, look, are in the process of looking for someone have no interest in doing it themselves. Okay. Right? So, and that's almost true for anything. We talked about in that specific video, a handyman, that I could put up, as a handyman, I could put up videos of myself fixing random appliances around the house. I personally will never fix anything in my house. I like, like, I, like my wife is like trying to get me to like change light bulbs. I'm already like scared out of my mind. Like forget like hammering something into a wall. Oh, that's yes, yes. Um, so, so like literally I wouldn't do anything in my house on my own and we just like wait like six months till something else is broken so that we can like rationalize the price of a handyman coming in. Um, but so basically if I created content as a handyman doing that stuff, the 10% that'll do it themselves wouldn't have paid me because they'll just find another video online to do it if I didn't make it. And the person that wouldn't do it himself anyways is gonna pick me because they saw I just did it. Right? So if I fix a bookshelf and I have these bookshelves that are like tilted to the side and if I watch someone do it and they're local and able to come to my house, I would pick them over someone who I don't know would do that. So that's why I'm prepared to give any piece of information away for free because the people that are, take, are doing it themselves, they're not paying me and the people that aren't doing it themselves are not gonna do it themselves anyways. That's really why I, yeah, thank you. Yes? What, um, what would you, you've thrown around a couple of dollar figures. What would you recommend as a reasonable budget to start with? Okay, so, so it really, that just totally depends on the audience size. Again, I try to keep my audience sizes to under 50,000. At that point, if you're spending even just $10 a day for like a month, you've already hit most of the people that are active on Facebook. So the way, uh, I actually do wanna mention this, um, Facebook has this funny number here. It says, so this is 300,000 people that have been to my website in the last 180 days, right? I don't send, I don't send anyone to my, like I don't send anyone to my website because all my videos aren't here. So I don't, like when I decide I want to send people to my website, I can do it, but so 300, 300 people come to my website in the last 180 days. This number is, is what will not help me because I cannot target all 300 people. So the same thing is true with 50,000. That number 50,000, no, no, that when I'm advertising to that group of 50,000 that, that I've chosen of my interest groups and people that have been to my website and my email people and the people that are look like that I've taken all the interest groups. So that list that I'm left with 50,000 really means like 35,000 because 50,000 just means everyone that has a Facebook account, whether or not they ever use Facebook, right? So if I'm targeting um, Michael Jackson fans, I don't know. I, I, I like putting the word Donald Trump. So I'm going to Donald Trump because it does better on Facebook. Donald Trump um, fans, I target those people on Facebook. So if Facebook tells me that he has a following of um, like 100 million people, <laughs> if he has a following of 100 million people on Facebook, the end of the day, I will never be shown to more than 50 million because the likelihood is more and more of them aren't active today. And, I, and also, if they're not active in the next month, I don't want them anymore because the likelihood is they're not, not going to buy from me and they're not going to watch my next video. So I don't even want those people. I don't want to run my ad for more than three months because the people that are seeing it at that point are no use to me. They're not going to then go and buy. They're very inactive. Someone who's not on Facebook every 30 if days. If you were to deal with the local Jerusalem market, mm -hmm. yes. right, so you're talking much smaller numbers. So much smaller numbers. About, I was mentioning before, I think there's maybe 40,000 Anglos, including children. That's Jerusalem, Beit Shemesh, everything. That's almost, I, yeah, I've worked with a little Beit Shemesh area. Right, yeah. so, so you're looking at about 40,000. Mm -hmm. So you're probably talking about, I don't know, 8,000, 6,000 households. Okay. All right, so 
Well, how many of the kids are actually on Facebook? Then you're like losing out the yeshivish side. I'd say it's for the parents. Okay. okay. Adult product. Mm -hmm. For the parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, whether it's you know a handy person, a life coach, whatever it is. So what kind of numbers are you talking about? One. Budget-wise, for so honestly, you could spend like a dollar a day at that point. You're you're at t the tiniest. I'm saying at that point, if you're sitting at four thousand households, then you're just targeting women. So you're only going to hit that four. Like if you pick, if you're like cutting down, which at some point, I I will just be like, okay, let's open everything and just let anyone else see the ad at this point because we're like we don't like we're not getting the results. We want to get more results, so we'll just start opening the interest wider. There's no problem in just like like removing some some restriction like I was running an ad for a company and they wanted to target only women between the age of 20 and 40 and then I said why don't we just try to broaden the audience see what happens and then we got more leads because we increased the audience size. How, how long should it take to start seeing results? Define results. Sales. Sales. Three months. Three months. Like obviously it totally depends on if you're spending a thousand dollars a day or ten dollars a day you will see sales faster. But if you're spending the mo most small businesses are not spending a thousand dollars a day, I'd assume. Um, so if you're targeting an audience of thirty to fifty thousand people, you're spending ten dollars a day. The goal really is to start seeing money in after three months. But that also means you have a long funnel. Right? We talked about. You got to get them to know who you are. You got to get them on your website. Get them to give your e their email address. Then now we could finally start trying to sell to them at this point, right? Not even email. Not on or well, you can target people. You can target those people after they've gone through the whole process. You can then target them on Facebook and on email. And I would there's this rule. I'm not sure it still applies. There's a rule like rule of seven. Like people like making up terms. This is, a, this is also a Seth Godin idea. Um, if you coin a term, people will talk about the term, and then the term just follows along with you, right? So I want to make up a term so that people talk about the term, and then who made that term up? Uh, and then my name comes up, right? Uh, and then he talks about the book is really just the the carton. It come the term comes in, like so. He he actually sold Purple Cow, the book, in a milk carton, because the whole idea was I'm selling the term Purple Cow. I want people to talk about the cow. I'll give you the milk bottle. You'll talk about the cow, right? So I want, yes. Okay, so basically the, power, the, the rule of seven is you want to be seen seven times. Se seven times till someone is prepared to buy from you. So what that means is the first ad um, on Facebook is one. They come to your website is two. You advertise to them to get them on your email is three. In the email is four. Now at this point you still have to find three more ways to interact with them. So on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff gets you that one step closer till they actually go and buy. I don't know if the, I wouldn't say like the rule of seven is like required, like, no, I can't sell it to you till seven, but at the same time, that's usually the, the ease of sale comes when they, they recognize your brand and your logo and who you are and then building trust over time. That's usually happens around seven. HubSpot does it on one landing page. Every, if you have been on HubSpot landing page, their rule of seven, HubSpot, HubSpot is really, really expensive, but they're really fantastic. <laughs> they're $40,000 a year like for the basic level package. But basically, um, the way that their landing pages work is there's a giant banner on top, and then, and then content, and then another banner, and then there's two more as you leave. Like, let's see if I could, where's, which one's the, the red dot? Which one's the laser? Star. The star. This guy? OK, <laughs> so, so here's an ad for HubSpot, and then one here, and then once you scroll down the page, you'll see one there, and one there, and under the article, right? So yeah. in the one page, they are putting seven ads. And they're also giving you free webinars all the time to right. use us. Right, exactly. So basically, HubSpot on every page uses the rule of seven. They actually wrote the article that I read about the power, <laughs> the rule of seven. They want to show you their logo seven times, whether or not you click, because now you are that much closer to trusting to buy. You could ne not remember any ad you've seen there. No. Have you clicked on the ad? No. You've never clicked on an ad? No. Ad blocker doesn't block um, the in native, in sponsored ads. It will block the sidebar ads, which is why they're cheaper to run on Facebook. But I, I don't think that it, you cannot, I don't think you could block out a sponsored post in Facebook. I just don't pay in the feed, in the feed. You might not realize them that they're ads. Well, hopefully they're doing such a good job that you don't even know. No, <laughs> You can't I think of, ever, I mean, I don't well, the, well so, so I'll tell you an example. I saw Osim actually advertise to me to buy a, a can of a sauce. They, can't, they advertised to me. You're not going to give them your email address, so go to the store and buy it. 
Georgia? So they actually made a really stupid ad. The actual, the, you click on it, goes to a PDF that's a, you have to print out and bring to your local new, like supermarket. Like that's like the, a they coupon. Love, love you there. Um, the you know, they, yeah, they don't want to deal with the coupon. But basically the advertising for OSEM was anyone in Israel, any age, that likes family. If anyone knows, if anyone can tell me that, what that means, what liking the term interest family means, I legitimately have no idea what that means. But they were targeting everyone in that interest group. And somehow they had like 30 comments on that ad of like random Israeli women that I guess actually, so they are, they might be doing a great job. I, I don't know, but that seems like a very silly way to advertise because I have the interest group of family. I am now interested in like making big ziti tonight and want to buy big ziti. Do you know, do you don't think because you said if you were, the grocery shopper in your family. Yes. Because you I have a grocery shopper in my family. Okay. <laughs> so, and you, you see that then maybe you're more likely to buy it in the supermarket? Um, but, but the problem is, even if that's true, how would they, have, how would they know how much money they made on the ad? They, they have no way of knowing. There's no way that they could tell me in a month from now, the ad campaign I ran on Facebook led to a 15% increase in jars of, of sauce. whatever stomach fat or okay okay I click on it I never get to the end of that mm -hmm. ad because it's just you know they just talk mm -hmm. and talk so I'll tell you that it's want to tell you what it is that you need to do to get rid of your stomach fat they want you uh, to I'll tell you it's stomach. exercise and eat less I solved you a lot of your problems <laughs> it seems like there's some trick there uh, I, if you find that trick, please call me. I've been looking for like the last five years now. So if, you're, if you know that trick, I, I will pay a lot of money for that trick. But first, yeah, I want someone that knows the trick, that did the trick, then I will maybe, we'll talk. No, but I'm I'll give you. I don't listen to the end of the So end. I will tell you, I'll tell you that Israel definitely gets less ads than America. They put out, there's an article that came out, I would say about three, four weeks ago. Um, what is the worth of a single account on Facebook? So guess, what's your guess? The worth of a, for Facebook, what's the worth? So, I don't buy anything that's average. So average, averages. <laughs> um, average, the average user on Facebook is worth about $3.50. Now they have 1.6 billion users. You could do the math, right? But they're only talking about a quarter, not a year, right? So they're really making $12 a quarter, $12 a year on a person. The catch is that a person in the United States or Canada is actually worth for $13 a person, right? So you're only seeing the ads in Israel the companies in uh, the the competition in America is significantly higher, and that's why you'll actually I hear a lot of friends that complain about the ridiculous number of ads that they're seeing because people aren't targeting in Israel, which only gives you more room to target in Israel because they want to take your money and they want to be put you in front of your people that you want to be seen by because the advertising budget in America is much much greater. I'm saying that they're making if they're making. $12 billion a year, there are significant amounts of money being spent on advertisements in America, advertisements in Canada, and you're probably, they're probably seeing it like every four posts on Facebook, I would assume at that point. So if you're here, if you can decide where your target audience yes. is, you can, Correct. United States, Australia, yes. and what about, when is it, what time, of, it's not what the time of the day? So I will tell you that the ad that I ran for a client recently that doesn't work, Call Now Ads, so, so people like my age, I hate calling people. Like in general, I hate being on the phone with people. Um, there are people that enjoy being on the phone. Like, do you like being on the phone? So, but with strangers? No. Okay, so no one likes being on the phone with strangers. But Facebook has a thing. Well, they're, they're nice. Like, I like calling people in the States for service. Right. They're so perky. Right. <laughs> I was on the phone with uh, T-Mobile before I made Aliyah, and the guy's name was April, and I was like really thrown off. It was like this, I, what I assume like, a this male. a male voice with his name April, um, and it was like, it really threw me off. Um, <laughs> right, so <laughs> the thing is this is going online, so it's gonna be really great when people get to this point in the video. Um, <laughs> um, so, 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 so basically we're targeting people in LA for a med spa, which I don't even know what that means, but I was targeting people for it. Um, and it's like the med spa capital of the world is 90210, they are number two in LA. So they're pretty big. And um, then we wanted people to call now. The catch is that their office is only open six hours a day. There's a lot of other times. So you can actually, if you make your ads based on, as opposed to a daily spend, you make them uh, a, like a total, meaning like I want my ad to run for six weeks and I wanted to spend $6,000 in that six weeks. Then I could pick times of the day to the point where I could say, I want it to run between 12 and 1 p.m. 
on Tuesday, and I want it to run between, like it gives you this whole nice graph, I, I get to it, but we're running out of time, like a minute and a half now, two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes, but you could actually pick in the chart where you want the ad to, when you want the ad to appear in someone's newsfeed. Can you speak to um, mobile and Facebook promotion? Yes. Um, people are on mobile significantly more than they are on desktop, but I think that most people buy significantly more on desktop than they do on mobile. Am I wrong? Just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. Because, so what are, the, what are the big players now in mobile space? If you don't have a company, if you don't use Slide, that's what we were talking about before, pay, PayPal, um, I'm, Slide is like this beautiful interface that you like click a button and a thing pops up on your screen and it asks for your e credit card information and then the best part about it is it saves their credit card information. So that means it's on Slide. Not, you don't touch the, you don't ever see their credit card information. Um, slide collects the information and then the next time they come to your website, all they have to do is confirm their name and the, and the three numbers on the back of the credit card or four on American Express or something. Um, and so what that allows you to do is the experience becomes significantly better for them because they don't have to, like, they, it's this beautiful mobile friendly thing with four questions. Name, I think email address, credit card, and and like exp expiration date, and that's it. And then it's saved, and the next time they come on, it's already there. So the, using those types of um, platforms to take money will, allow, will make it much better. But as far as I see, I'm just gonna put this down because the mouse is <laughs> moving. Um, as far as I see, most people are buying on desktop. So what I do is, I start the ads running on both, and then I go on Google Analytics. Was there a, court, was there a thing on Google Analytics here? No. No. Not that I remember. Okay. There, so Google Analytics has a lot to talk about, way more than the 76 seconds I have left. Um, <laughs> we, we need like a month and a half for that. Um, so Google Analytics has a lot of stuff. One of the things you could do is see how people are interacting with your website. So I was running an ad for a hairstylist in Connecticut, Boston, New York. She's starting a, um, Boston. and New York. She's, running, she's starting a thing now. It's an app that you could um, pick. You, you want a haircut, uh, hairstyle and makeup for 20 people pick the day, pick the artist, pick everything, and they come That's to your store. True. She does 500 weddings a year. Oh, wow. So, we're, so we were, I was running ads for her. Did she have a thing you could pick the hairstyle? Yes, oh. on the app. It's called Beauty Entourage. Wow. Yeah. need this here. Yeah, so, so call up yeah, Ashley. Them <laughs> they, they come show up at your, and, they, and they're like pre-approved artists. They're not like people who you've never heard before. Very quickly, so basically, we were running ads to get new artists because we want to triple their we want to triple their, their team size. They're at 26 now. They want to be they want to do a, like a thousand weddings every year. So we were targeting people, and what we noticed was the people that came on desktop spent about a minute and a half on their on the site, and people who came from mobile spent about 12 seconds on their website. So we stopped marketing to the mobile people because they didn't even read the they didn't come they didn't go to the website and actually read it, which is a long lengthy process that they then have to like give in their name and their pro the, like. You know their Pinterest account, and because we want good artists, so usually those, that's where people are in their their resumes. So we wanted to find people that are going to sit and actually read the form. So again, it's worthwhile to start on mobile and test to see if they are people who will give their email, will watch your video, will do something. And then if it's not working, then make sure to check on Google Analytics what types of people are the best for you. I think Google Analytics does age also. You could actually see the age of the person coming to your website, and by doing that, it lets you drop your your target audience smaller, meaning you're spending less, meaning you're getting better results. And it's just all about testing, finding the people that work for you, and getting in front of them for the, less, the least amount of money you can to get the most amount of money out of each of them. Okay. If you have any questions, you can email me at um, any email address at Rats Pack Media. I have a card. Rats Pack Media. R-A-T-Z-P-A-C-K Media uh, dot com. Um, and I, I guess I'll, I mean, where you just send me the list. Hmm? Where are you based Bruce? Beach Amish, but I will travel to anywhere you, we also, this, there's this crazy thing called Skype and Google Hangout that I'm, huh? <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be sending out, uh, excuse me, thank you letter to you all, I'll be sending out all the speakers of contact information. Uh, in any case, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.